In this presentation, we will discuss the stability and determinacy of rectangular frames often used as the skeleton of buildings. We want to determine if these three frames are stable, and if so, find their degree of indeterminacy. Let's start with this frame. The frame rests on two pin supports, at points A and B. Joints C, D, E, and F are rigid connections. Since these internal joints are rigid and the frame has four support reactions, we know the system is stable. Here's why. A beam resting on two pin supports is stable. If we make this beam into a rigid frame, the structure stays stable. Bending the beam to form a frame doesn't make it unstable, as long as the joints stay rigid. So, this is a stable configuration. Adding another level to the frame does not change the stability condition of the frame. So this frame is also stable. In fact, no matter how many levels we add to the frame, the structure remains stable, as long as the connections are rigid. So, frame A, and any variations with added stories are stable. Let's determine the degree of indeterminacy of the frame. Observe that the top part of the frame forms a loop. To ascertain whether we can calculate all the member forces using static equilibrium equations, we need to make a cut through the loop. Doing so reveals a sufficient number of internal member forces, allowing us to determine if the system is statically determinate. In this instance, by cutting through the frame vertically, we expose six internal forces, three belonging to the upper beam, and three to the lower beam. So, we have a total of ten unknown forces, six from the cut and four reactions from the supports. For each half of the frame, we can write three static equilibrium equations, resulting in a total of six equations. Since the number of unknowns, ten, is greater than the number of equations, six, the frame is statically indeterminate. Its degree of indeterminacy is 10 minus 6, or 4. Let's consider how adding another level to the frame affects the degree of indeterminacy of the system. With the additional level, we introduce three more unknown forces. This brings the total number of unknown forces to 13. However, the number of static equilibrium equations remains the same, 6. Therefore, the frame with three levels is indeterminate to the seventh degree. In general, a stable single bay frame, with S, support reactions, and N, stories, has a degree of indeterminacy given by equation S plus 3N minus 6. If we assume fixed supports, we get 6 for S. For a six-story frame, N equals 6 so the degree of indeterminacy of the frame becomes 18. Next, let's take a look at frame B. You'll notice that the two beams have simple seated connections at their ends. These connections aren't rigid, which means the beam ends can rotate relative to the columns. For our model, We'll treat these as hinges where the bending moment is zero. I am going to use the line diagram of the frame. The hinges are depicted using small circles. We might be tempted to think that these hinges are reducing the degree of indeterminacy of the system. But hold that thought. Before we jump to any conclusions about the frame's degree of indeterminacy, we need to check its stability. So, the big question is, does the frame remain stable with these four hinges in the system? To answer that, we'll start by counting and comparing the number of unknown forces to the number of equilibrium equations. Let's dive in. First, let's cut the frame vertically through the hinges, like this. Now, we'll show the internal forces and support reactions. Since there's no bending moment at the hinge, we'll have only two forces at each hinge, a vertical force and a horizontal force. Let's label these forces. In total, we have 12 unknown forces, two per hinge, plus the support reactions. 
and since we've split the frame into four segments, we get a total of 12 equilibrium equations, that is three equations per segment. So, at first glance, since the number of equations equals the number of unknowns, we might think the frame is stable and statically determinate. That is only true if the equilibrium equations are satisfiable. In other words, the frame is stable only if the system of equilibrium equations yields a unique solution. So, the question is, does the system of equilibrium equations produce a unique solution? Let's find out. Suppose the frame is subjected to a horizontal load P at its upper left corner. Instead of writing out all the equations, we can simplify the problem by making a couple of observations. Take a look at the free body diagram of this beam segment. For the sum of the moments about the left end to be zero, Fy has to be zero. And if Fy is zero, since the sum of the vertical forces must be zero, Ey is also zero. So, the free body diagram simplifies to this. Using the same logic, we can conclude that Cy and Dy are also zero for this beam. Therefore, the free body diagram simplifies to this. Additionally, since the sum of the horizontal forces acting on this beam must be zero, we can conclude that Ex equals Fx. Let's refer to this axial force as F. Similarly, the axial force in this beam can be referred to as D. Now, here's where we run into a problem. For the right column, the moment equilibrium equation written about point B is. And for the left column, the moment equation is. And here lies the issue. For these equations to be true simultaneously, P, the applied load, has to be zero. Otherwise, we have contradictory equations. Since P is not zero, we can conclude that the equilibrium equations are not satisfiable. In other words, the frame is not stable. So, by replacing the rigid joints at the ends of the beams with hinges, we've turned the frame into an unstable configuration. This instability arises in part due to the presence of the hinges and in part due to the geometry of the frame. Now, let's take a closer look at frame C. This frame is almost identical to frame B, but with one key difference. The hinge at the right end of the lower beam has been moved to the middle of the upper right column. This means we now have a rigid connection here, and a hinge there. Here is the line diagram depicting the frame. To determine if this structure is stable, we can break it down into four segments, just like we did for frame B. Each hinge gives us two unknown forces, and each support gives us two reaction forces. That adds up to 12 unknowns in total. Since we have four segments, we get 12 equations. If these equilibrium equations can be satisfied for all possible loading cases, then the frame is stable and statically determinate. Let's see if the equilibrium equations can be satisfied when the frame is subjected to a horizontal load at its upper left corner. To start, we can simplify the free body diagram of the frame. Looking at the beam segment, the sum of the moments at the left end must be zero, which means Fy is zero. Since the sum of the forces in the vertical direction must also be zero, Ey is zero. Let's remove Ey and Fy from the diagram. Next, we examine this segment. The sum of the forces in the vertical direction must be zero, so Gy is zero. We can remove gy from the free body diagram. The sum of the moments at this point must be zero, so fx is zero. And since the sum of the horizontal forces must be zero, gx is zero. Here's the simplified free body diagram. Going back to the beam segment, the sum of the forces in the horizontal direction must be zero, so ex is zero. Here's the updated free body diagram. 
We now have six unknown forces left. We can write three equilibrium equations per segment, giving us a total of six equations. These equations give us a unique solution for the unknown forces. So, under this loading case, the structure is stable. But what if the load is applied at the upper right corner of the frame? Would the equilibrium equations still be solvable? Let's find out. By examining this free body diagram, we see that EY and FY are zero. Since the sum of the forces in the vertical direction in this segment of the beam must be zero, GY is zero. The sum of the moments about this point must be zero, so GX is zero as well. To maintain equilibrium in the horizontal direction, FX must be equal to P, and so should EX. Here's our simplified free body diagram. We have six unknown forces remaining, and six equilibrium equations to solve for them. Assuming the height of each floor and the length of the beam are equal to H, we get these member forces and support reactions. So, yes, the equilibrium equations produce a unique solution for this loading case as well. Other loading cases yield the same outcome. They all produce solvable equilibrium equations. Therefore, frame C is stable and statically determinate. To wrap up, the stability of frame structures depends on their geometry, supports, and any internal releases within the structure. By carefully examining the equilibrium equations, we can figure out whether the system is stable and statically determinate. It's mainly about breaking down the problem and understanding how each part contributes to the overall stability of the structure.